Welcome to God's Church on this, the second Sunday of Christmas. Our communities of faith, North Beaver Creek and Blair Lutheran Churches, have one great aim and purpose, to help people grow in life-giving relationships with their neighbors, with their own selves, the earth, and with God. As we begin, remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy One of Israel, the Word made flesh, the power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into the name of Jesus, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Gracious God, in Christ Jesus you came among us as a light shining in the darkness. We confess our failure to welcome this light. Forgive us and renew our hope so that we may live in the light of your grace and welcome the truth of Christ the Lord. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. In this, God promises to bring Israel back to its land from the most remote parts of exile. In Zion, Israel will rejoice over God's gifts of food and livestock. Young women will express their joy in dancing, and God will give gladness instead of sorrow. And Jeremiah writes this. 
Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away, and say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall all the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. Psalm 147. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion who has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you wish the finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgments to Israel. The Lord has has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Hallelujah. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians. In Jesus, all of God's plans and purposes have been made known as heaven and earth are united in Christ. Through Jesus, we have been chosen as God's children and have been promised eternal salvation. Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, We have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, we who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance 
toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We get used to our surroundings. As human beings, we take to what we're given, and we adapt to it. In general, when we're presented with something as true, we tend to believe it. When I lived in Buffalo, I worked at a tutoring center for a while. And while I was there, naturally, I met the other tutors. And I met one in particular, and at first, he didn't seem to have much in common with me. But then we started talking about baseball. And we talked about our favorite players. And we got to referencing some of the movies we liked and found we had many in common. And of course, soon we became friends. We joined a fantasy baseball league together. We would occasionally watch movies together, and we laughed a lot. We're still friends. One night when Kristen and I were invited over to their house with some other friends, we were going around finding out more about one another, and my friend John asked what what each of us had done that weekend. And I shared that I had just auditioned for the Buffalo Philharmonic Chorus. The entire room stopped talking. It was just like in the movies uh, when everything goes silent. And they all turned and stared at me. And my friend John said, Wait, what? Seriously? Who are you? My friend John knew me as someone who liked baseball and comedy films and tutoring. He didn't know that I had been in a choir from middle school through high school, that I toured with the Warburg College Choir. In fact, in Buffalo, if you say you went to Warburg, they said, what? They say, what? Hogwarts? He didn't know that I joined a choir when I moved to D.C. He didn't know I missed it. He didn't know that I was a singer. So he said, who are you? At that moment, John saw me in a new light. We can think we know someone or some place or some year, but if we look at it in a new light, we can see something new. I've lived in some big cities in my life, and when they find out that I went to high school in a town of 1,300 people, uh, when I I went to high school in a town of 1,300 people, uh, people find that out and they often say, Whoa, what was that like? As if I came from a different country altogether. 
And sure, my classes were small. I graduated with 45 kids. I had to drive for half an hour to get to a movie theater, but my small town was filled with people who loved the arts and loved farming and loved hunting. My small town had a community theater and a few bars. The people in the town came to high school basketball games and high school choir concerts and Christmas concerts at the church. And when I explain that, the people I meet sometimes see rural life in a new light. This year, as we're tired of saying, it's been, it's been tough sometimes to see the light. 2020 will re be remembered for several things. It'll be remembered for a time of political disagreement. It will be remembered for a time of mask wearing, for cancellations of concerts and trips, plans foiled. It, be, it will be remembered for smaller holiday gatherings, for churches going virtual, for funerals in the cemetery outside. It will be remembered for our country taking a good hard look at the racism that still persists within and looking forward to how we can make amends and work for justice for all. 2020 will be remembered for the sadness, the pain, and the strife. And yet... And yet, I think if we look at our year, even this year, this 2020, with the lens of Christ, with the light of Christ, perhaps there was also love. There was also hope and even joy this past year. John proclaims one of my favorite verses in the gospel. He says, a light shines in the darkness, that in the beginning Christ, the Word, the light was with God, and all came into being through that Word, through that light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, came into the world. At Christmas time, in this Christmas season, we remember that that light comes into the world again and again. And we can hold up everything, even 2020. We can hold it up to the light. And yes, that light will reveal our hurts and our scars and our falling short. It will reveal some of our ugly truths. But I'm willing to bet that even in this past year, there have been moments that you saw love shining through where you've seen things in a positive, new light. There have been moments when you've seen that light that has persisted from the end of time, from the beginning of time, from all time, when you've seen that light we call Christ. And that light will continue. When we hold ourselves and our year up to the light, it's like seeing things through the light of stained glass. We'll see things in a new way in a new color. Because in Christ's coming, we have been made new. Through Christ's life, death, resurrection, and ascension, we are made new. And again this Christmas day, today, we are made new. We can turn to the light of Christ. And we are asked to be made new in Christ, who came into this world, who knew pain and happiness who knew sadness and anger and frustration, and Christ even knew joy. That Christ, that Emmanuel, gives us new life. Christ, God with us, who knows us as we know ourselves, who knows where we've fallen short, but also who knows the light inside that we think we aren't worthy to shine. That Christ, that word, that light, gives us new life, another chance another chance to see things in the light of Christ. Christ lets us see ourselves, our past, and our neighbors in that new light. This Christmas, I'm, I've been clearly thinking about moving from one year to the next, as we just had New Year's. As we do that this year, as we move from one 2020 to a hopeful 2021, I think of one of my favorite songwriters, a guy named Peter Mayer. 
and he has a song that hit me really hard this year that I didn't think of much before. It's a song called One More Circle. And I'd like to read the lyrics to this song as a prayer for us all today. Now, in the song, he describes the past year as fun because he's not writing it about 2020. That's not a word I'd use to describe 2020. But otherwise, these are the words and the prayer I hope for us today in this new year. As we hold our new year up to the light, as we hold ourselves and our relationships and all we have up to the light. Let us pray. We have been weighed down by sadness like a stone. And we have yearned. We have yearned. We have sometimes felt so utterly alone while we turn, while we turn. We've been stricken by the wonder of it all, stricken dumb, stricken dumb. And we have sometimes felt so faint we want to fall, overcome. But all in all, I'd say this year in flight together has been fun. What say we make one more circle Round the sun. We have, ra- we have raised our fists in anger and we've tried to work it out. Work it out. That we need each other, we cannot deny. There is no doubt. There is no doubt. So let us weave another dream in outer space while we're turning, while we're turning. On this planet home, that holds our human race, we still are learning. But all in all, I'd say this year in flight together has been fun. What say we make one more circle round the sun? Friends in Christ, together, let's make one more circle round the sun, knowing that we need each other and we need the light of Christ making us new that light allowing us to see one another, to see one another in a new way, in a new light, that light allows us to see one another as Christ sees us. May we hold our lives and our loves and all we have up to the light of Christ. Amen. May it indeed be so.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow or division or despair. Make us radiant with goodness that we might always live to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystems of this earth in delicate balance. From coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests, show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those who risk danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and the weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You come to us in the beauty of darkness and light. Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor your image in one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And holy God, you turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Especially this week, we remember Larry Jorgensen. And with all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace, as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray. God with us, you came as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine, reminding us how good you are at blessing ordinary things. And then, through these gifts, help us to bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. Amen.
Receive the blessing. May your life be a note in the very song of God, singing new creation into every nook and cranny of reality that your shadow graces. Be courageous, be free, prune that which needs pruning and water that which thirsts for righteousness. You are the body of Christ, the light of the world. So pick up your hammer, your brush, your trumpet, your skillet, your pen, lift up your head, lift up your voice and walk, run, dance, fly, sing. The great composer calls you into being. So go into your world, your valley, and your garden and sing his grace and his peace. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. of his love.